Hi and welcome along to Arsenal Fan TV. We're live here today at Emirates Stadium. Going to be doing some filming, going to be talking to a few people to get their views on how Arsenal are doing. They've been terrible recently. We mustn't forget that it's been raining, so the pitch is quite... It's been raining? It's last night I've chatted to my mum, yeah? My mum's wang her in. Is she mad? <laughs> it's time to go! Every year! Every year we're gonna win. We're gonna do. We're gonna win the last ten games, and we're gonna win the league. Get real. He's going to put a major cash. I don't understand though. No. Why not bring on? Oh. Have you got a lot more hits? Sport had a lot more hits. You're asking some ridiculous. I don't know. You're asking some ridiculous questions, Ray. We don't need. We know that we're 100. Him to lose because. We, get Listen, more, you know, we are behind the team 100%. In no, all fairness. No, no, I'm not having it no more, Robbie, because they're the ones that have got the problem. They're the ones that have got the agenda. They care more about Arsene Wenger than they do Arsenal. And when he goes, please, please, cough with him. Who the f do you think you are? But nothing's good enough. You've caused this mentality, not the fans. You've caused this blood. Cannot continue at this football club no more. Something has got to change. I paid £4.24 for a pie today, bro. <laughs> Arsenal Fan TV, the cornerstone, the peak of UK football YouTube and I want to say even to a stage UK football culture. The impact of Arsenal Fan TV is extraordinary. The amount of content creators that it has formed, not just on its platform, but creating a whole new genre in the football YouTube space. Not only creating careers for many people in the platform, but by creating content that has lasted for over half a decade now. Memes that are still used to this day at a high level. However, with AFTV comes a fair level of controversial events by not only how they are seen by their own fan base, but how they are seen in the football world as a whole by many of the mainstream media and alongside that, their controversial characters on their show that has garnered a lot of attention in the last few years. Tell me down below your thoughts on AFTV and how do you see them as a platform? If you are an Arsenal fan, I am really interested to hear what do you think about Arsenal Fan TV? Are they a respected platform for Arsenal fans to share their opinion on the club or are they seen as an embarrassment and create content largely for fans of other clubs to mock Arsenal fans? Or is it a bit of both and maybe over time in different periods, maybe things may have changed? In this video, I shall give both sides to these arguments. So tell me down below your thoughts. If you guys do enjoy, then smash a like button and also subscribe if you are new. At the time of recording, 71.1% of you guys who have watched my recent videos are not subscribed to the channel. So if you can do me a favor and hit that sub button, then that will mean a lot. Of course, big shout out to the Patreons of the channel. Their names are on the screen right now. Thank you for every single one of you who has given a helping hand to the channel and shown appreciation for what we do here. So to each of you, thank you. And of course, as of this week, I have launched my own football art website called Mazala Designs, including wall art, posters, designed entirely by myself. So if you want to check it out, then I'll leave a link at the top of the description for Mozilla Designs and for you to decorate your room, your office space, there could be some art in there that you may find interesting. So go and check it out and let's get into the video. Before we do begin, I put out a tweet to ask you guys your thoughts on AFTV and in response, DT himself responded back with a popcorn emoji in which I said to him, if I were you lad, I would give this one a miss. Anyway, DT, if you're watching this, What's up? AFTV, or was known as Arsenal Fan TV, was formed back in October 22nd, 2012, and was set up during the 
2013 season. It launched, describing itself as an Arsenal channel for Arsenal fans, and offered a platform for their fans to voice their unfiltered opinions before and after matches. Who was the creator of AFTV? Well, the man himself, Robbie Lyle, who was a former BBC reggae radio host. He also worked as a surveyor before quitting his job to work for AFTV full time. He created the channel with him and his cameraman, Tao, who also quit his job to pursue a career in YouTube. Their first fan interviews were for the 5 2 win against Tottenham Hotspur. When Robbie was asked of why he made the channel, he said, We've all had enough of so called pundits, most of whom aren't even at the games. So I started my own channel to hear from the real fans with real opinions. Arsenal Fan TV pioneered the concept of supporter-led TV or fan TV groups on YouTube. Many fan channels has come after AFTV, all with very similar traits. The United Stand, Red Men TV, Blues Fans TV, West Ham Fan TV, and how can I forget full-time devils or being called Stratford Paddock? What are these traits you may say? Well, the most important part about any football club, the fans. A channel that gives a platform for not just one football fan, but for multiple of the same club to voice their opinions about what they believe is going on at the football club in good or in bad times, and a place where other fans can communicate and start dialogue with one another in the communities, on a YouTube channel, in the comments, etc, etc. If this is through debates online, through live streams like what Mark Goldbridge, the United Stand does now, or by going outside the ground after the game, post-match interviews with multiple fans that comes by them. This has blown up in the middle to late tens. And since the 2000s, mainly after Covid, the popular nature of these interviews after games has died down dramatically. However, it cannot be underestimated that the impact of how popular AFTV is to a main casual audience also benefits and rubs off views to a lot of other fan channels. Since Arsenal Fans TV's creation, the channel has continued to provide viewers with fan interviews and content around Arsenal on social media. As throughout the 2013s, 14s and 15s, the channel was still creating content the exact same way that it does now, by being outside the ground and letting fans have their say. And it was in their second season where they had a massive viral hit. Most famous ever football fan rant, either the board or Wenger must go. A 2 minute 36 second long video of a man outside the Emirates Stadium after a 3-1 loss at home to Aston Villa at the start of the season. This, as far as I'm aware, is the first time that a fan outside a ground having an interview becomes viral in this manner. To this day has garnered 1.5 million views. In these years, he also had quite a popular series called Top 5s. A simple Top 5 or Top 10 series outside the Emirates that Robbie speaks about many things to do with Arsenal Football Club. The most popular being Top 5 Arsenal Judases, with some incredible and iconic clips. As the years gone by, the channel gained more and more of a cult following, and gained a respectable audience. In the early years, there were regulars on the channel that contributed to many of their interviews that were match-going fans home and away for many a time and two of these original fans were Ty and Claude. Both of these were part of the channel in the early days, before anything blew up, and they always contributed to the channel, giving their thoughts after the games, and over time became more of a staple to the channel. Claude and Ty had an incredible chemistry, where they both just bounced off each other in an absolute hilarious fashion, as both of their personalities couldn't be any more different if you tried. Ty, who is easily recognisable due to his nature of wearing not just an Arsenal shirt or Arsenal hoodie or Arsenal jacket, but also an Arsenal branded beanie, an Arsenal branded pair of headphones and an Arsenal branded water bottle. He is every club's dream fan, where he is passionate and not only passionate, but completely positive all the time without any excuse otherwise. At times saying things that could be seen as just completely completely deluded, such as one time Natty said, well, we mustn't forget it's been raining. Well, it, was, it wasn't the best defending. Things can happen. Remember, we mustn't forget that it's been raining, so the pitch is quite... It's been raining? Yeah. Are so you being serious? It's raining for both teams. Basically, excusing the fact they lost because the surface were a bit too wet. 
maybe. And then there is Claude, who is also an original of the channel. Claude was very well known for his incredibly passionate rants that he has made throughout the entire channel's history. A man very well respected by many people of not just the Arsenal fan base, but of other fan bases as well. However, in contrast to Ty, his opinions are way more aggressive. Believing that the club should always be moving forwards and that if anything seems to be slowing the club down, then it is time to move on. And as his very well known phrase says, it's time to go. FTB Claude, I'm going to ask you the same question that I asked. It's time to go! One of the most popular clips of Claude and Ty going at each other in a passionate rant back and forth was the 3 2 loss away at Stork City. And of course, it would feel wrong to talk about Claude and to not also go on the fact that, as of recording, I believe that this is nearly two years or is two years since his passing on the 29th of March 2021. And I am quite gutted because I feel like Claude seeing how good Arsenal is now and that they are finally now actually showing some bottle and some fight and some pride into their club. It, I would have liked to see Claude be able to see that. So uh, my two cents on Claude, I wish that he could see what Arsenal are doing now because I think that he was a true fan, a passionate fan, just wanted to see the club do well. And I feel like he deserved a chance to see what they're doing now. So of course, rest in peace to Claude. AFTV was doing respectively well on YouTube for many years in the 2013s, 14s and 15s. However, in the 2016-17 season, this is when AFTV took not only themselves, but YouTube and Football YouTube to an entirely new level and multiple eyes being seen on their platform. This was largely due to two brand new characters on our channel and they go by the name of Troops and DT. The first AFTV video that I think really reached the viral hits and really gave it its platform to continue to get bigger and bigger over time, I think was the Bayern Munich 5 Arsenal 1 Champions League knockout away at the Allianz Arena where both DT and Troops had both explicit rants outside the ground with both having 2.2 and 1.5 million views. Now of course there were videos beforehand that was doing quite well such as the home leg where they also lost 5-1 where Troop said Wenger needs to leave ASAP. So it is not to say that they didn't have big views before this happened and they didn't have a big audience however when it comes to a viral casual audience this does feel like the moment when they really blew up into the world of YouTube and put AFTV on the map and gain the attention of many people in the mainstream media who really, really did not like them. However, before we do get into the controversies from here on out, let's break down these two main characters who are Troops and DT. And of course, a shout out to other members of the channel, other regulars that may not be as popular in terms of views as Troops of DT, but also deserves a mention, such as Heavy D, Mo, Turkish, Kelechi, and Lee Judges. There's many others too, however, these are the most popular ones. Let's quickly scan through these people right here. So, the most obvious, most heated one is Mo, who about a year or two ago was kicked off AFTV for showcasing the Palestine flag on his outfit while he's doing interviews, like a badge, in which he did an entire one hour long video, which I would recommend to watch if you've got any interest, which goes in depth into his reasons of why he's left AFTV and his own personal gripes with Robbie. I need to say this because I feel like he may not appreciate being you know, related to AFTV um, anymore. However, he used to be a big part of the channel. So that is why he's no longer on. That is an entirely other new kind of worms that if you want to go down, then the video is right there. Heavy D. Heavy D was a very contrasting personality and was a big part of the channel. Because of his personality, he conflicted with many people on the platform and he did a video two years ago of the reason why he left AFTV. And only a few months after he and AFTV split up on the 25th of November 2020, sadly, Heavy D passed away. Rest in peace to Heavy D or by his full name, Colin Nero. Another popular regular of AFTV who is still there to this day, who is Lee Judges, who represents the older demographic of Arsenal fans, who, again, goes on very similar passionate rants. Sometimes he could come across a bit unhinged, but for the most part, I do think that he is a passionate fan and is just any normal fan that goes to match days. Just 
may go a bit off the ball at times. And let's get to the big boys here. Troops, who is known as the Blood Fan Man. A very popular trend that I saw in many comment sections was that after every single interview, they did a counter of how many times he said Blood and Fam. And they did a contest of who won each round. I think usually Blood won more times than Fam. So, big up Blood. I'm so white. I would say that Troops was probably the most popular member of the channel. And sadly, in September 2020, he left AFTV to go and join Barstool Sports and to become a part of their brand and move over to New York City. And he's still over in New York working with Barstool Sports to this day. He had a good relationship with the Arsenal fans, I feel like, and with even the players. A very popular one was his relationship with him and pierre Emerick Aubameyang. I always feel like when he speaks, he always tries to come across in a way that is the most entertaining and to bring across a comedic element, which, of course, suited him really well. And, of course, there is DT who, um, I don't really know where to start here. DT, or Liam Goodenough, was also a very popular and maybe actually could be the most famed regular on channel. Because if you look at the most popular videos on the channel, the majority of them involves DT. DT was similar, but different in many ways. The troops both had very wild rants about the club and most particularly to Arsene Wenger, both being very outspoken in terms of their opinion with Arsene Wenger and that it's time to go. Alongside that, also going at the players many, many times. DT would be coming across in a lot more aggressive way, in my opinion, than what Troops did, as when Troops kind of always, in my opinion, try to see a sort of entertainment element or comedic element, I think DT just said the first thing that came to mind, which people liked and thought that he was very straight going and said it how it is. However, even though both of these two have left the channel, they have both left in completely different ways, with Troops leaving to get the bag over in New York City, which I absolutely do not blame him with Barstool Sports, DT left in a completely different way, as he was prosecuted in court and was convicted of stalking, assaulting and kidnapping his former partner. And I won't go into the exact details of what happened. Of course, due to this, he left AFTV. However, when he came back, he did a video of his own stating that Robbie from AFTV was lying about his lack of involvement or knowledge about what DT has done and what he got himself involved with. I don't want to get too much involved into this. However, there is another kind of worms with this story in itself. So if you want to do your own research into this, then feel free and look it up. However, it could go quite deep. Let's break down the first big controversial event around AFTV, where the most notable moment of their channel potentially was in February 2017, where Sky Sports pundit Gary Neville described Arsenal fans as embarrassing due to their hounding of their manager at the time, Arsene Wenger, as well as taking a swipe at the channel Arsenal Fan TV. Quoted by Gary Neville saying, I was watching Arsenal fans slating and slanging into him and I thought he doesn't deserve that when speaking about Arsene Wenger. A few days later, Neville accepted an invite from AFTV to say his piece and that video of Gary Neville meeting Arsenal Fan TV with DT, Troops, Claude, Moe and Robbie is still on the channel six years later with three million views. The third most popular video on the channel. This is not the first and not the last time that mainstream media takes a dig at Ars Fan TV. Another popular one in recent years is by Talk Sports, where Simon Jordan, who is a popular member of Talk Sports, had a quite heated debate with Robbie Lyle live on air for 30 minutes straight. This video has also almost gained 1 million views over three years, and I'm going to play a clip of that debate now. However, it did not end there with not only Simon Jordan, but with, of course, Arsenal legend Ray Parler having another heated debate with Robbie Lyle live on air, which lasted six minutes. Ray Parler claiming that Arsenal fan TV, aka Robbie Lyle, wants Arsenal to lose and is hoping that Arsenal does lose so that he can gain clicks. Speaking in a patronising way to him, saying that all he wants is hits. Now, before we do go any further, I do want to give my opinion on especially Talk Sport and the Gavin Neville incident because I don't want to feel like I'm I'm ganging up and I'm I'm piling on Arsenal fan TV right now without giving my own thoughts and how I see it as well. The way that I see it, Arsenal fan TV. Robbie has been doing this for over a decade, right? And he was doing the exact same thing in the exact same way with Ars Fan TV, going to games, home and away, getting fans involved for years before they even got any sort of real success. It's not like he interviewed the same people and specifically selected them. He interviewed a multiple wide range of people. If they're young or old or black or white or male or female, kids, adult, he interviewed 
every single type of Arsenal fan that would be willing to go outside the Emirates Stadium to go and talk to him. I think the idea that Robbie wants Arsenal to do poorly just so that he could get more views, I think is idiotic because I don't really see the reason why he would want that. And you may say, oh, well, he makes more money. He makes more money. You know, that's money. That's all he wants. But he gets views. He gets money with positive videos, with normal videos, even when they win. You know what I mean? His content hasn't changed in any way since when he first started. And even now, when Arsenal are now doing well, his content goes through the same blueprint and, if anything, has evolved and increased the quality of the content by having a lot more different series and content on the channel. And I also want to add that of all people to point their finger at Arsenal Fan TV, Talk Sport. Talk sport of all people are going at Arsenal Fan TV for talking about how they are using clubs or fans for clicks is astronomically ironic. I do recommend, however, that you do go and watch that Gary Neville video, as even now to this day, six years on, I do think that it does hold up in a very good way. Let's talk about AFTV and the perception with Arsenal fans. With a portion of the Arsenal fan base, and I would like to say that they are a vocal minority more than anything else, are very strong about their views on Arsenal fan TV, calling them a disgrace, a stain on the club due to their behaviour by their regulars such as DT or Troops and many others, of course of how they treated Arsene Wenger, who of course is a Arsenal legend and people to this day, well, looking back on it with reflection, may feel like the treatment of him was unjust. Another element of it is that I do see why Arsenal fans do not like it because they always may see it as a bat to hit their own fans with, that if you have a platform, if you have videos that people can use to use against you to showcase how embarrassing your fans are, how embarrassing your club is by showing you these videos week by week by week by your own fans and having that be used against you it can be quite annoying at a stage as a Burnley fan on the platform I do understand my place that you know as a I guess when you think of Burnley fans there's probably not too many that you can think of so know that my name may be one of the first you may think of when you think of Burnley fans the way that I see football and the way that I've been growing up to see football is that you represent your club and you represent your area and that's how I see football so that's how I treat it on YouTube that I don't want to embarrass my own fans and by fans I mean Burnley fans let's say after a Burnley game I don't want to go ranting and raving and you're know, tearing down players or tearing down whoever because I know that that can be used against other Burnley fans to go and mock them with I don't want that perception of myself and how Burnley fans see me and when it comes to Arsenal fan TV, that is something that has been ever present for a long, long time. The most famed event between AFTV and Arsenal fans was at Everton away, when Arsenal lost away at Everton. And after the game, when they were doing their usual post-match interviews with the regulars, Arsenal fans went at AFTV, confronting them, got very heated and was very close to becoming a full-on fight, with police having to get involved. Another clip here, I believe, five years ago from a fan attacking Robbie. Violence or any scenes like this is never the answer and if you have a problem with AFTV I've always said that your best way to react to it is by simply ignoring it because there's nothing that you can do to stop it as it is a free platform with people having their own way to freely express their opinions. This is how Robbie responded back to this event. This thing about oh you're making money. <laughs> I'm not allowed to make money now. I don't get it. What when Arsenal Fan TV first started both myself and Tao, you can't see me, stood behind the camera now. We were working full-time jobs. Uh, there'd be games that we'd go to and uh, like midweek night games away from home. We'd get home, at, we'd get back at like, I don't know, say five o'clock in the morning. I've got to be up at seven o'clock and go to work. Seven, work a full day. I haven't been on holiday with my family for four years since I've been doing Arsenal Fan TV. I haven't been on holiday. Every single penny that I earn has been sunk into buying equipment, buying tickets. We, we've never had a ticket from the club. Never. People, yo, they get tickets from the club. 
Rubbish. I've got kids, you know what I mean? They still got to eat some food. you got a problem with me making some money. Can't I make no money? What's the problem? Where we are now, this studio, yeah? Do you think this is free? We've got to rent this. And you know what? Now, we've outgrown this place. We need to go into a bigger place. Are you going to give me the money for it? I know that this video is quite long, but I feel like if I'm going to do a video about AFTV, I might as well cover every single area that I really can. I think one big event that happened was when at the Oxford Union in February 2018, Arsenal player Hector Bellerin was critical of Arsenal TV directly, going so far as to question whether or not those appearing on the channel were true Arsenal fans, while also accusing the channel of profiting from the team's failures. Uh, they've been like, oh, have you heard that what that guy on Arsenal Fan TV? Like, I think um, it's so wrong for someone that claims to be a fan and their success is fed of a failure. So how can that be a fan? So I think there's just people um, hustling, trying to make money their way, which, you know, everyone is entitled to do. Another controversy that happened with AFTV was to do with Claude with a watch along of the North London Derby in July 2020, where Claude used a racial slur towards Korean player Son Heung Min. AFTV lost their sponsor Harry's from the channel and Robbie announced that Claude has been removed from the channel indefinitely. Claude made an apology video, which I felt like was genuine. Due to the tragic news of Claude a year later, due to his passing, people point the fingers at AFTV, saying that they owed a part to blame of the event, which I think is sickening to use a man's death as a, as a weapon almost to use towards Robbie or AFTV. Was Claude a perfect man? No, but I don't think anyone is. And the fact that I still see this to this day being used against them, I think is rather sickening. So again, as I said earlier, rest in peace of Claude and I hope fans. And when you look at AFTV now, they aren't doing bad really at all. Most videos are still getting very respectable views from 70k views to 140k views of podcasts. Their interviews can range from the rubber interviews of 100k plus to a smaller amount of 13k, even 7.8k. And when you look at the people that they interview, they have about 20, 25 interviews almost every single game and they are very, very vast of old and young and black and white, male or female. I do like what they've built over there. And if I was an Arsenal fan, I would love what they're doing and what they're offering right now. A ton of content and with some very good thoughts as well. I think they've really expanded into a more respectable platform in the last two years. The only negative that I can see with AFTV really is that they've built a blueprint that if any other fan of any other club, if you're a Liverpool fan, United fan, Chelsea, whatever, that you can follow the AFTV blueprint, which is basically using your own club to meme it, to almost embarrass your own fan base, to garner views from opposition fans. One of the most obvious examples, and I'm going to name them, is the range of Irish Liverpool TikTokers, such as Paddy Murphy or that other guy, I need to Google it, Jonathan Morley. I shouldn't even name um, this guy, but... When I see them, it just makes me cringe because all it's doing is just mocking their own fans because when they do well, it's just embarrassing and when they do poorly, it's just embarrassing and you see a lot of people like this in the modern age because they know that the easiest way to get views and to get notoriety, to get attention onto yourself is by not being sensible, is by basically trying to be as outspoken, as outlandish as you possibly can. That's just how you grow for the most part and that is one negative side that I've seen from AFTV as I don't want to say it's only their fault, other channels have done it too, but they are definitely the big one that has kind of spawned this new type of fan who plays more like a character than actually being a, a genuine human being. Yeah, um, this is nearly touching 40 minutes, so I think it is now time to round up the video. Um, tell me your thoughts down below in the comments. I really enjoyed making this. I think that it's been long overdue, and I think that this is a topic that a lot of people may have very vast opinions of. I think people that may dislike Arsenal Fan TV, I think should... Give it a chance again if you're an Arsenal fan. I do think that what they do now in the last 12 to 18 months is much different, much more positive than what they used to do in the past. When they were known as the ranty, banter era type of channel when you know, Arsenal were doing really poor, I completely get why Arsenal fans were not a big fan of it because I wouldn't like it either if I saw a Burnley fan on my club, you know, 
do the same thing by embarrassing our fans and then you know their content gets used on me about you know how our fan base is, is cringe or whatever else right so i completely get it but i do think they've gotten a lot better if you like them or not they are pioneers of the football uk scene spawning so many football fan channels who has followed their blueprint again as i said earlier like you have to stand full-time devils west ham tv redmen tv they all follow very very similar styles some more than others but it's given these people an opportunity create an opportunity for themselves become a platform and to you know work alongside football clubs you know when you're seeing these guys work with sky sports with the overlap a lot of that is due to AFTV. now of course if AFTV never existed would these fan channels still have happened most likely but the thing is AFTV is the first one and they were the first one to really blow up and they deserve the credit for that so yeah tell me your thoughts down below in the comments if you guys did enjoy then please do smash a like on the video let's try to hit 2500 likes and also subscribe if you're new i think by the time you see this we should be nearly on 334,000 subscribers so please do show some love and to end it off my website mazoladesigns.co.uk my own design company if you do like the look of any of these designs then go down below at the top of the description to my website there's an also bird camp at the newcastle one online if you do want to create your own and just suggest a different goal that's not available then you can do so on the custom page so with that said that's all I need to say about AFTV and to Robbie if you are listening or watching this then I have massive respect for you and keep up the good work. I'll see you later on. Thank you for your time.